innovation to do what you want, freedom to move wherever you want, flexibility to play how you want. This is the idea behind our senior design project. Hi, I'm Joseph Alojo, and this is Kurt Robinson. And today we're going to present to you our portable laser guitar. Before we start, I want to give a few acknowledgments. I would like to thank the Department of Engineering for giving us the time, the resources to do our senior design project. I would like to thank our professor and advisor, Dr. Sarah Kate Wilson, also Dr. Raman, and also Jane, Justin Noller and Tim, Jim Rotip. To start it off, Kurt's going to go behind the project and motivation behind our senior design. So why would we even want to make a portable laser guitar? I mean, there's plenty of great guitars out there today. What makes this different? So being a guitarist myself, I saw that there were some problems with today's guitar. About a month ago, I was on an airplane with my guitar, and I was bumping into people going down the aisle. It was hard to put in the overhead. I found that today's guitars can be big and bulky and cumbersome to, to travel in tight places. Um, with today's advancing technology, everything is getting smaller and more lightweight. So I said, why can't guitars do that as well? Also, if people are handling your guitar like badly, you can get the neck breaking, as you see in the picture. Um, it takes a lot of time sometimes to change and tune your strings. And when you have an on-the-go musician, you want to just plug and play right away. There's also, in playing guitar, as many of you might know, a big learning curve. A lot of people get started on the first month and they just fizzle out. Some of that plays into uh, the irritation of the metal strings. As you can see from that disgusting picture, um, <laughs> you can get calluses on your fingers pretty quickly by, by trying to practice for long hours with metal guitar. So how is this different? How can, these, how can this invention solve these problems? Well. First of all, this electronic implementation takes away the need for any acoustics. That means that we can make it smaller, and we don't need a big body to project the sound. It's all done electronically. Because the strings are not metal, but they're laser instead, what it does is it saves the time from tuning the metal strings or changing them constantly. It's as simple as a flick of a switch, and the lasers turn on. No tuning or changing strings. New guitarists don't have that learner's curve because their fingers, are, fingers will never get hurt. Lasers don't hurt their strings. They may hurt their eyes if they stick them in there, but no, these are class two lasers. I'm just kidding, they won't hurt your eyes. <laughs> From this bottom right picture, you can tell that with an electric design like this, you can actually put a hinge on the neck and fold it into the body itself, cutting the size in half, making it even more portable. I think that's what we're looking for in today's technology. Now I'm gonna go behind the mechanical and the laser design behind this portable laser guitar. So at first we wanted to make a body that was lightweight and sturdy. So we were thinking a hard plastic, maybe an aluminum. But looking more into how we would implement that, we said, man, that'll take us too much time and money. So instead, uh, I found an old souvenir from Hawaii that I decided to cut into. Um, this provided the size and the actual cavity needed to store my electronics. Um, so we have this ukulele that we're using. Because it's stringless, it makes it um, just portable and the possibility of making the neck hinge. Like I said, there's a cavity to store the electronics as well. So as many of you might know, two components of playing guitar. You've got your left hand that does the fretting, and you've got your right hand that does the strumming. So I'm going to talk right now about the strumming hand. How did we implement that? As you can see, there's mounted lasers and mounted photo detectors. There's an uninterrupted stream of lasers pointing straight into the photo detectors, as you can see. And when your finger breaks the signal, the photo detector detects that, that the laser's not hitting it anymore. Um, it's nice that we have lasers because it's a consistent way to detect strumming. We had to mount them on the guitar somehow. So as you can see, our good friend Jim Ratu allowed us to use his shop and we made custom mounting for the lasers and the photo detectors. Photo detectors um, work great, but not so good with ambient light. So we had to ha make custom housing for them. Um, drilling a hole just big enough for the laser to come through, but, not, but shielding it from the rest of the ambient light. So that's basically how the right hand works. Now how the left hand works, the fretting hand, is a little more complicated. That was definitely the, the hardest, um, most stressful part of our project. We, we would use, go back to the, the scientific method to develop how we're going to even figure out this left fretting hand. How can we know what fret our finger is on? So we asked ourselves, can we do both left and right hand with lasers? That would be awesome and that would be cool to show. So we said, OK, let's research it. We found an optical triangulation method in an IEEE conference paper. We developed the hypothesis, yeah, you can find out what fret you're playing. It's easy, just reflect the laser off, bounce it back into a sensor, way to go. So we <laughs> tested it, unfortunately our hypothesis failed. 
but we were able to leverage those results to develop the metal <coughs> contact method in which you will see today. So the most technical slide we have, bear with me. The, the IEEE paper by my good friends Norgia and Pesatori, my Italian friends, uh, presented a paper at a conference last year. This optical triangulation method, we have constant lasers moving down the left hand. What it shows here is that your finger gets in the way. The laser bounces off and comes back and hits a photodetector. So in theory, this is, this is awesome. Uh, it's a pretty simple algorithm. We know distance D from the laser to the photodetector. We know F, the focal length. And we also know, uh, what am I missing here? Uh, X, the position. Now, the position sensing detectors would have been a lot different than the uh, regu regular photodetectors because they detect X, the distance um, in the coordinate system in which the laser hits it. So if we have all those knowns, the only unknown left is L, our length. Once we know L, we know the distance our finger is from the source of the light. When we know that, we know what fret we're on. And of course, when you know what fret you're on, you know what note you're playing, which gives us our solution. Now, this sounds all well and good, but then we tested it. <laughs> It was difficult. Um, one thing that we found was that light doesn't reflect off our finger as well as the conference paper kind of alluded to. Um, and another oversight was that when you're playing a guitar, your hand is constantly moving at different angles at different times. The algorithm that we showed assumes that there's a lot of linearity in your hand movement. And um, because of the varying angles and the way the light bounces off your fingers, the algorithm we kind of threw out the window. It didn't work as well. The beam divergence also bouncing off the figure was a little too wide for our position sensing detectors um, to give us any accuracy that we actually needed. So after talking to our good friend Justin Muller, who's not here right now, and, and, Jeff, and Joseph, um, we developed our metal fret detection solution, which is the solution that you see today. So what's happening is we have 12 metal frets. And of course, this metal is very conductive. Current flows freely right through it. And what you don't see is 12 wires on the inside of the fretboard, all soldered on and plugging into our microcontroller. And what happens is our Arduino, our microcontroller, has a ground pin. That ground pin, we conveniently hooked up to the guitar itself. And that ground, can, the current can flow into your hand, the right hand. So you see that coming up. Using this metal ring, we're able to get current to flow. And Conveniently, current also flows through your body very well. So if my right hand is grounded, my left hand is effectively grounded as well. So if my left hand is grounded, I can touch any of these metal frets. And once I touch it, the Arduino input will register zero, grounded. All the other, the other 11 of the frets will be going between numbers 100 and 1,000, just random numbers. But once I ground it out, that shows that fret is zero. That tells us what fret we're on. So this method also was very helpful because it reduces our power consumption. Originally, we wanted even four more lasers and four more photodetectors, but this method cuts that right out. Um, so it was very helpful for us and convenient. Now, for the rest of this presentation, I want to hand it over to my friend Joseph to talk about the signal processing and the computer playback. So I'm going to talk about the computation behind our project. So first, like Kirk was saying, we have the fretting hand and the strumming hand. So those two are connected to the Arduino the microcontroller. When it does that, our microcontroller is also connected to our Bluetooth device. That is how the data gets from the guitar to the computer. After that, we have code Java, which takes that data, parses it, and then that's what you hear through the speakers. So basically, our Bluetooth device is taking in the data, sending it to our laptop, parsing it, and playing it. So, the Arduino microprocessor. One of the reasons why we chose this is because it has very good benefits in what you can use in the technology. One of the things is it has an abundant amount of inputs. What that means is we can condense it to like we have for the ukulele for four strings, or we can make a traditional a guitar with like six strings. So depending on what we want to do, it gives us lots of flexibility. Also, this is programmable in a language similar to C. So me and Kurt took classes, C, and other various coding classes, and because of, a, because of the Arduino device, it gave us an ease in learning how to code, since we're not necessarily computer engineers. So that gave us that flexibility. <coughs> also, this device is open source, which means it has an extensive library and tool that can be found online. So in case you get stuck when you're trying to code, you can seek help, and you can probably find the answer. 
So this is our Bluetooth device, Blue Smurf. So this is the component in which how the data is transferred without any cords. One of the reasons why we chose this is because it has a low draw of current, 25 milliamps. So what that means is for our overall power consumption of our guitar, it's relatively low. It's good for um, energy. So another thing is, is that unlike, or like other Bluetooth devices, ours is secure. So what that means is, is that if you're trying to connect to our laptop, you require a certain pass key in order to connect. Without that pass key, the guitar and the Bluetooth won't sync together. Another cool thing is, say Kurt was to go all the way to the back of the room or maybe on the other side of the library. As long as he's within 350 feet, you will still be able to hear the music coming out of the laptop because that's where all the sound comes from. So you necessarily not have to see Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, the other cool thing is, since we were um, implementing this on um, Macintosh, or not Macintosh, Apple, um, the Blue Smurf is compatible with Mac OS X. So it gave us an enjoyment and without struggle of trying to figure out something that was compatible. But it is compatible with PCs, so compatibility goes across the board. So now I'm going to go into the computer playback. So, like I was saying earlier, we chose Java. The reason why we chose Java is because of JCube. This is an API, which is what the playback of music does. Without this API, you cannot play the music. And GIF, Java is a, it, it's easier to use with this JCube. So, let me go into this, how it works. So the Java code searches around the room for Bluetooth compatible devices. So it'll see all your cell phones, computers, laptops, whatever. However, like I said earlier, you need a passcode. So we see the passcode with this guitar. And once we type that in, the, the establish is connected securely. So you don't have to worry about anyone trying to hack in what happened to PlayStation. So, <laughs> so, once that is connected, when Kurt starts strumming and playing on the fret, that data is sent via the Bluetooth to the computer. So as it's being read in by the Java, it's being parsed. Parsing you can think of as like separation. So it takes the, all the stream of data, which is in one continuous thing, and separates it. So it says this is the fretting and this is the strumming. Once it does that, our JFU, the API, which is a application program interface for playing music, takes that and that's what attaches the notes that you hear and that's what produces the sound. And here's an example of the code, a simple C steel of how it's implemented. So one of the other cool things is like we're like, how can we introduce this guitar, make it easy for the consumers, make it fun at the same time? So we thought, well maybe if we introduce a graphical user interface. What's cool about this is saying, say like you're trying to play the guitar, like Kurt tries to press a button on the fret, and he's continually seeing missing. So with this interface, when he's pressing a fret, we will implement where you are on the fret. So each time you press, we'll have a button light up to correspond to where you are. So you can get the ease of playing. Also, users like flexibility and to do whatever they want. So yes, yeah, so we'll give you that option. So if you like more traditional sounding of guitar, maybe like Carlos Santana, more acoustic sound, you can incorporate that by with a simple click and you can change the sound of your guitar output. So while it's playing out of the speakers, you would hear a more acoustic. Maybe if you're more into metal or rock or kiss or something <laughs> like that, you want a more metallic sound, you can do that too. Simple click, notice the change of the guitar. This gives power to the users to do what they want with the guitar. Also, we're going to incorporate like a recording session. So, say you're playing a session and like you're like wondering why it's not sounding good. Well, you can record how you play, play it back, and then also, like I said earlier, the frets will light up. So then you'll notice like, oh, I missed that fret. So it brings the ease and the, um, the redundance of trying to mess up. It makes it easier for you to play. So you don't have to worry about the stress or trying to like, oh man, I'm messing up. It'll help you with that. So, in summary, innovation. We give you the flexibility with the guitar, being lightweight, 
can do whatever you want. You can carry it around, maneuver. That brings it to freedom. There's no strings. Like I said, Kirk can walk all the way to the other side of the building, play his guitar. Well, you know, you don't have to worry about tripping over no cord or anything. And flexibility. Basically turning your laptop into an amplifier, an interactive one, which you can tweak to the liking that you choose. So we're going to show you a short clip of how our guitar works. Hi, it's Kurt and Joseph here to demonstrate the portable laser guitar to you. Joseph will demonstrate how to play chords and multiple strings. So, if I wanted to play a chord, all I would do is to break the, all four strings with my one hand at the same time. Like this. If I want to play one single note, all I would do is to break that one single note like this. If I want to play multiple strings in a continuous motion, I would move my finger back and forth like this. And there you have it, chords and strings. Hi, it's Kurt Robinson here to demonstrate how I can move up and down in pitch by pressing on the different frets. As you can see, I have a ring here on my right hand, which is grounded into the guitar, which also grounds out my left hand. When I touch on the fret, it grounds it and detects which fret I'm playing. And then moving downwards. And there you have it, moving up and down the pitch. And that concludes our senior design presentation. Any questions? Really complicated project, lots of moving parts, a lot of interaction between some of the problems you ran into. How did you guys partition the work out between the two of you? Well, I think Joseph really had an interest in the Bluetooth side of things and wirelessly getting the connection going. So uh, he started developing that and messing with the Bluetooth, doing a lot of the research on that. Um, I, being like the guitarist of the group, really was interested in the body um, and the way the lasers would even interact with it. Um, so I took that side of uh, the project um, and ran with it for a while. Um, of course, we, we spent a lot of time together, so we are, it was kind of interlaced. Um, and we have good friends that are awesome at Java, and I have a friend that has a shop of his own who is you know, good at woodwork and stuff. So we were able to utilize our resources to um, make this happen. What, what fields are you two in, and, and where did the idea come from for the laser guitar? So we're in the electrical engineering, and the idea first came from Kurt being a guitarist. And we were like, we're engineers. We like to solve problems, but we also like to do, innovate on stuff currently. So we saw the guitar, and we noticed that people, you know, have a hard time playing. Me, personally, I, I suck at a guitar. <laughs> What's something I can do to be cool like a guitar? Why not eliminate the castle and eliminate the strings? And so we thought, like, lasers, being like strings, you can think of a string when you pluck it, it vibrates. Lasers are like the same thing. They pulse continuously. You can't pluck it, but when the vibration is similar to the data being sent. So we thought, try, or we thought to incorporate the same idea, and then or, or, or we have here. My guitar. Yeah. What's next? Well, um, one of the reasons why we didn't do a live demonstration today is because we're still working out some of the timing elements of the guitar. Um, a lot of that has to do with the Java code and the way information is coming in and going out the speakers at the same time. From our demo, we can do simple things, but playing a complex song, uh, we're moving in that direction. So I think a few more weeks of maybe coding might get us to a place where we can do a, a good song. Uh, so. Are you going to build another one or fight over who gets to keep it? <laughs> we'll build another one. We'll do a base next time. <laughs> I was going to ask you, too, the, um, so you, to make sure I understand all the moving parts of the project, you had yeah. to sort out the strings, obviously, you had to sort out the fretting. You had to write some software that was on a processor inside the guitar, but you had to arrange the data from the frets and the string, mm -hmm. and then you had to write some software, probably, that, that helps the JFUG software understand how to sort back out again. Um, right. Hey, you run into what kind of communications problems did you run into in trying to assemble packets of data, move them somewhere, and then disassemble them on the other side? Well, I mean, in, in the Java, uh, I guess there wasn't too much. Actually, we didn't have many issues there. Um, 
the, the Bluetooth actually worked really well for us. Just send it, we just, uh, the, we programmed our Arduino just to send a string. Um, we had all ones here, but if you break it, it turns to a zero. We had all numbers like 100 through 1,000 here, but if you touch it, it turns to zero. So it just sends a string of four plus 12 you know, a 16, um, you know, number string straight through Bluetooth to the computer. So the computers e can pretty easily parse that and say, well, this is the left hand, this is the right hand. Um, and JFuge is an awesome API that basically made it really easy for just to say, oh, given these numbers, play this music out. Okay. And like one of the other things that I, um, for the Bluetooth, the transfer rate's 115 kilobits per second. So there is some delay and some latency but the human eye, not human eye, wow. Well, human yeah. ear can't detect that because it's being sent so fast. So it all sounds like it's all in real time. But there is, you know, some Theory. communication. <laughs> yes, sir. There is, is there any issues with uh, heating, like overheating with the chips or anything out of it? Because I just noticed that it's very thin and like it's like there's not really much air movement inside the, the product. No, we haven't had any problem with that so far. Um, if we leave it on for a long time, sometimes it starts to lag, but I think it's more on the Java end. I, I think uh, if we could, we can install a fan, but I don't think the need has been there yet. Yeah. So you're swinging around more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you have batteries in it? What kind? Yeah. Just a 9 volt. Just a 9 volt? Battery. Yeah. Um, and it's been, it works for about maybe an hour or two. So we'd probably, if this were to go on the market, we'd probably have to come up with a more creative uh, power solution. Has anyone ever tried to make a laser guitar before we talk about going to the market? Is yeah. there anything else like that? There's the right hand implementation has been there um, with where the lasers are, but the left hand was a different, they, they used a different strategy. Um, and in the paper I talked about, the, the, the guys at the IEEE conference, um, they're developing something, but it has strings with it. So it's, it's a matter of mixing digital and analog <coughs> strings together. So it's not completely lasers or digital. It's, it's mixing kind of the analog signal of the car with, um, they do a little pre-processing pre with the lasers. So there's nothing quite like it. Um, I'd like to say we took a few different ideas and kind of pieced them together to make it our own. Is it uh, so if I smash it on stage, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, the, the most expensive thing in here is the microprocessor. Um, and so if we were to mass produce them, like, you could take that out of there, and um, you could pretty, be a pretty cheap electronic instrument, actually. Um, yeah. You get keyboards today that you can buy for 40 bucks at Best Buy. Or so, so. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, would, would a smartphone be a feasible alternative for an amplifier? That is an awesome idea, sir. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because, like, we, we were trying to think about that, but necessarily, if we would have had a computer engineer, they probably could have um, coded an app for the iPhone or um, Android using the SDKs. But since we're not really good with that kind of language, we couldn't implement that. But we hope maybe sometime in the future, maybe a computer engineer can take on the project and maybe implement that device. But virtually anything with a Bluetooth type of receiver can be turned into an amplifier. So in theory, the possibilities are endless. Can you pair it with uh, Bluetooth speakers, or is the audio processing the computer end? The processing to the computer end. Uh, so it wouldn't go straight in there. You could go from the laptop then to Bluetooth speakers, okay. but you have to go, go through some computer. Okay. So. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, in that blue cube uh, shield you have there, is that, are you talking through PCM or is it analog across to that shield from the, from the AER? Um, in other words, where were you digitally converting your lasers? Yeah, so the, the Arduino itself, the microcontroller, uh, took the analog signal from the, from the sensors and converted them digitally so they could be sent out over Bluetooth. But from from the AVR to the Bluetooth, yeah. Out, uh, is that over the PCM ports? Or well, the that's just through a, just through a, a wire. You can plug in the Bluetooth in um, from the microcontroller to the Bluetooth module just by a simple wire that's connection. Good. And the Bluetooth is smart smart enough to take that input and to know what to do with it. So, any more questions, guys?
Thanks for coming. <laughs>